The life and sad ending of Roy Acuff. Roy Claxton Acuff was born on September 15, 1903, in Maynardville, Tennessee, to Ida and Simon E. Neal Acuff, the third of their five children. Roy Acuff is of English ancestry, and his ancestors came to North America during the colonial era, settling in the mountains of Virginia and the Carolinas. Roy's father was an accomplished fiddler and a Baptist preacher, his mother was proficient on the piano, and during Roy's early years the Acuff House was a popular place for local gatherings. Roy attended Central High School, where he sang in the school chapel's choir and performed in every play they had. His primary passion, however, was athletics. He was a three-sport standout at Central and, after graduating in 1925, was offered a scholarship to Carson Newman University but turned it down. Accompanying the years of that life is Mildred Louise Douglas Acuff, the wife of Roy Acuff, who was born May 28, 1914, in Tennessee. Roy and Mildred were married on Christmas Day 1934. They had two children, daughter Thelma Acuff Gossett, and son Roy Neal Acuff. Mildred made most of the financial decisions in the Acuff household. It was in fact Mildred's name at the bottom of the document that formed the partnership between Fred Rose and the Acuffs when Acuff Rose was founded. Roy said many times that Mildred gave him much more, that he was able to give her. And speaking of art was his predestination when at first he did not choose music as his passion. In 1932, Dr. Howard's Medicine Show, which toured the southern Appalachian region, hired Acuff as one of its entertainers. Acuff began his career as a blackface performer. As the medicine show lacked microphones, Acuff learned to sing loud enough to be heard above the din, a skill that would later help him stand out on early radio broadcasts. In 1934, Acuff left the medicine show circuit and began playing at local shows with various musicians in the Knoxville area, where he had become a celebrity and fixture in local newspaper columns. Acuff's powerful lead vocals and Kirby's dobro playing and high-pitched backing vocals gave the band its distinctive sound. By 1939, Jess Easterday had switched to bass to replace Red Jones, and Acuff had added the guitarist Lonnie Pap Wilson and the banjoist Rachel Veach to fill out the band's lineup. Within a year, Roy Acuff and the Smoky Mountain Boys rivaled the longtime Opry banjoist Uncle Dave Macon as the troupe's most popular act. In the same period, he was initiated to the Masonic Lodge of East Nashville No. 560. The first show at the new venue opened with a huge projection of a late 1930s image of Roy Acuff and the Smoky Mountain Boys onto a large screen above the stage. A recording from one of the band's 1939 appearances was played over the sound system, with the iconic voice of George Hay introducing the band, followed by the band's performance of Wabash Cannonball. In spring 1940, Acuff and his band traveled to Hollywood, where they appeared with Hay and Macon in the motion picture Grand Ole Opry. Acuff appeared in several subsequent B-movies, including Oh, My Darling Clementine, in which he played a singing sheriff, Night Train to Memphis, the title of which comes from a song Acuff recorded in 1940, and Home in San Antonio, in which he starred with Lloyd Corrigan and William Frawley. Many of Acuff's songs show a strong religious influence, most notably Great Speckled Bird, The Prodigal Son and Lord, Build Me a Cabin. Such songs were typically set to a traditional Anglo-Celtic melody, which is most apparent on Great Speckled Bird and the 1940 recording The Precious Jewel. Acuff performed popular songs of the day, including Pee Wee King's Tennessee Waltz and Dorsey Dixon's I Didn't Hear Nobody Pray, the latter of which he appropriated and renamed Wreck on the Highway. In 1942, Acuff and songwriter Fred Rose formed Acuff Rose Music. Acuff originally sought the company to publish his own music, but soon realized there was a high demand from other country artists, many of whom had been exploited by larger publishing firms. Due in large part to Rose's ASCAP connections and gifted ability as a talent scout, 
a cuff rose quickly became the most important publishing company in country music. In 1946, the company signed Hank Williams, and in 1950 published their first major hit, Patti Page's rendition of Tennessee Waltz. After leaving the Opry, Acuff spent several years touring the western United States, although demand for his appearances dwindled with the lack of national exposure and the rise of musicians such as Ernest Tubb and Eddie Arnold, who were more popular with younger audiences. He eventually returned to the Opry, although by the 1960s, his record sales had dropped off considerably. After nearly losing his life in an automobile accident outside of Sparta, Tennessee, in 1965, Acuff pondered retiring, making only token appearances on the Opry stage and similar shows, and occasionally performing duos with longtime bandmate bashful brother Oswald. In 1972, Acuff's career received a brief resurgence in the folk revival movement after he appeared on the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band album, Will the Circle is Unbroken. The appearance paved the way for one of the defining moments of Acuff's career, which came on the night of March 16, 1974, when the Opry officially moved from the Ryman Auditorium to the Grand Ole Opry House at Opryland. In 1979, Opryland opened the Roy Acuff Theatre, which was dedicated to Acuff's honor. Dunbar Cave State Natural Area was established in 1973 from a recreational area the state had purchased from Mrs. McKay King. The cave was owned by Acuff from 1948 to 1963. Two museums have been named in Acuff's honor, the Roy Acuff Museum at Opryland and the Roy Acuff Union Museum and Library in his hometown of Maynardville. In 1984 he made a cameo appearance in the music video for Mo Bandy and Joe Stampley's parody hit song Where's the Dress. In 1988, he received the Golden Plate Award of the American Academy of Achievement. In 1991, he was awarded the National Medal of Arts, and given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, the first country music act to receive the esteemed honor. Roy Acuff died in Nashville on November 23, 1992, of congestive heart failure at the age of 89. Acuff has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame located at 1541 Vine Street. He is pictured with other country singers at the New Smoky Mountain Opera in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Thanks for all the remaining documents, Roy Acuff dear, we will always remember you.